The wonder of colour, created from sunlight and nature's own organic pigmentation, has always inspired artists to create their own. During this century, the boundaries of colour limitations have been widened by innovative chemists through the discovery of brilliant synthetic organic pigments. Chemistry may be an affront to artists, but the success and the lasting quality of artwork often depends on the extent of our knowledge of this subject. We join artist and colorist Eugene Maxwell Smith in his studio, where he's working with predispersed synthetic organic pigments to make a variety of water-based paints. About uh, half of the uh, colours that we find on a, an artist's palette today are the synthetic organic pigments, most of which were uh, discovered this century. There is the uh, arillamide, lemon and bright yellow, the diarolite yellow, the dinitroaniline orange, the uh, bonarillamide red, and uh, a nice magenta in the uh, monoazo. The uh, red violet, which is a uh, quinacridone, very light fast pigment. The carbosol violet. And the very, very popular thalo cyanine blue, which has the uh, reddish variety and the greenish variety, which is the beta. And of course, last but not least, the uh, thalo cyanine green. Why use a dispersion and not uh, a dry pigment powder? This is an uh, ultramarine blue and here we have the synthetic organic thalocyanine blue. Just using some ordinary water you'll notice that the ultramarine soaks the water up immediately. That is typical of a a hydrophilic inorganic pigment. On the other hand, the thalocyanine blue will repel water. It's uh, hydrophobic. That's typical of the uh, lipophilic uh, synthetic organic pigments. It is possible to wet synthetic organics with water, but it takes a lot of know-how and special equipment to get a good dispersion with maximum color development. That is why the dispersed version of synthetic organic pigments is so useful for water-based paint systems. <laughs> 